Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, what is anhedonia? So anhedonia comes from the Greek, and it means without pleasure. And it's considered a symptom of many mental health disorders. Most notably, it's associated with depression and schizophrenia. When someone's experiencing anhedonia, they have a diminished pleasure in activities that would normally bring pleasure. So there's a loss of interest in activities. And we can think of anhedonia as being divided in a few different categories. One would be physical and social. So in the physical anhedonia, there would be food, sexual activity, hobbies, work-related pleasures. All those would be diminished. In social anhedonia, it would be interacting with other people, seeking out opportunities to socialize. We can also think of anhedonia as being divided into anticipatory anhedonia and consumatory anhedonia. So the pleasure of anticipating something, so perhaps a hobby, engaging in a hobby or a social activity, there is pleasure that comes just from anticipating that, just from thinking about the fact that that's coming down the line. The consumatory is when the actual consumption takes place, so engaging in the social activity or the hobby. One of the theories about how anhedonia progresses is that it starts with the consumatory anhedonia. So there's actually a decrease in the pleasure of experiencing an activity as opposed to anticipating an activity. And that this decrease in consumatory pleasure results in anticipatory anhedonia. So the theory is that anhedonia really starts on the consuming side and then moves to the anticipatory side. So anhedonia results in a withdrawal from activities that would normally be considered pleasurable and it decreases motivation. It is, as I mentioned, a key component of depression. It's actually one of the symptom criteria that we see in the definition for depression. But we also see it with a number of other mental health disorders, including bipolar disorder, which makes sense because that oftentimes has a depressive component, schizophrenia, substance use disorders, and post-traumatic stress disorder, as well as a few other mental health disorders. When specifically talking about anhedonia and schizophrenia, we think of the manifestation of anhedonia and schizophrenia as a negative symptom. So it's one of the negative symptoms in the symptom list for schizophrenia. There is a little bit of controversy around how anhedonia presents in people with schizophrenia, however. First, about a third to a half of individuals with schizophrenia could be classified as having anhedonia. And one of the theories about anhedonia and schizophrenia is that it's not really anhedonia. It rather is the appearance of losing interest in different activities. So it's the appearance that pleasure has been reduced. Another theory is that there is anhedonia with schizophrenia associated with it, but it's an anticipatory deficit. It's not on the consumatory side, it's on the anticipatory side. Meaning that many individuals with schizophrenia could still experience pleasure through engaging in pleasurable activities but they wouldn't experience pleasure in anticipating engaging in pleasurable activities. So they'll have a loss of interest and a decrease in motivation because they don't have that anticipatory piece to keep them moving toward the consumatory piece. Anhedonia and substance use disorders, that's also a little bit controversial. There are two theories there. The primary theory is that the substance use disorder occurs first. So substance use disorder develops, and then anhedonia comes after that. So the use of drugs, the abuse and overuse of drugs, results in anhedonia. The second theory is that the anhedonia comes first. So somebody has difficulty feeling pleasure. They don't anticipate feeling pleasure, and they don't actually feel it in the moment of consumption. So they look to substances to try to compensate for that loss of pleasure. Both theories are out there. Probably the theory that has more support in terms of the evidence 
is the theory that substance use disorder occurs first, then anhedonia sets in, but we really don't know. So what causes anhedonia? Well, you could think of anhedonia as having really three major causes. And again, it's probably a combination of these causes. And there may be other causal and contributing factors that we don't know about. And of course, there are risk factors we don't know about. So the first potential cause is brain functioning. And there have been a number of studies done on this. And what these studies really show is that there are certain areas of the brain that seem to change the way they function when anhedonia develops. So hopefully this type of research on brain structure will lead to treatments that can reduce anhedonia. The next potential cause is stress, particularly chronic stress. We know this is associated with anhedonia. And the third potential cause is genetics. We believe that anhedonia can be hereditary to some degree. So again, those are just three possible causes. There are a number of other possible causes as well. So why is it important to understand anhedonia? Well, we know, as I mentioned, that anhedonia is a common symptom with major depressive disorder. And when we consider mental health counseling and depression, oftentimes the anhedonic component of depression is a major area of focus in mental health treatment, in counseling treatment. So it's important we understand anhedonia, how it works, how to measure it, and how to treat it. I hope you found this description of anhedonia to be interesting. Thanks for watching.